So why is this approach so effective? Anders Ericsson, the professor of psychology at Florida State University, is recognized as one of the world's leading authorities on the development of talent. And he suggests that the type of practice that a person does will determine how likely they are to be successful in the future. He is particularly well known for the 10,000 hours rule, which is a theory that 10,000 hours of any type of practice will allow an individual to excel in their chosen field. Although this theory has been a bit misinterpreted, as it related specifically to violinists, it does give some convincing evidence that talent mostly comes about through hard work. Although the amount of practice a person puts into a skill is a very important factor for developing talent, what Ericsson has been more interested in is the type of practice that is required to achieve excellence. He suggests that people tend to follow one of three types of practice methods, which would largely determine the success that the person's like to have. The first and unfortunately most common type of practice is what Ericsson refers to as naive practice. Albert Einstein famously stated that the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And this pretty well sums up naive practice. One of our problems as humans is that we are creatures of habit and so we tend to repeat patterns of behaviour. This can be seen in the way we approach practice. Once we get to a level of skill where we are happy and can function well enough that it is automatic, we tend to keep repeating the way we practice a skill. A soccer player can practice doing step overs up to a point where she can do it quite easily. And then it is quite likely that she will just keep practicing it the same way in the hope of improving. Unfortunately, the often stated saying that practice makes perfect is actually incorrect in most cases. Very few people, for instance, improve their handwriting when they reach their 20s, even if they write regularly. And I think we all know people who sing badly for years and years without any improvement at all. In fact, it is more likely that practice actually makes them worse. Our ability is reflected in the quality of our practice, so to make real progress, we need to carry out what Ericsson refers to as purposeful practice. Purposeful practice is more focused and thought out than naive practice, and it requires four characteristics to be present. Firstly, purposeful practice has well-defined and specific goals. This means breaking a goal down into small steps and having a strategy for achieving each step. If you have a goal of being able to take the ball past the defender and then float across to a player running in towards the goal, and you have never been able to do this before, you would need to break the goal down into smaller, more specific parts. For instance, you may want to work on beating the defender first, and this may have its own smaller parts, such as which method of beating the defender needs practicing. For instance, the player could be working on kicking the ball past the defender and then running onto the ball using his pace. So he would need to practice getting the weight of the kick right and also possibly would need to work on his sprinting technique so that he can get to the ball before the defender can. He may then want to work on improving the quality of his crossing. Working on getting the right amount of power the right angle of contact with the foot, the right amount of height and the right amount of swerve on the ball to hit his target. Finally, he may be ready to start putting it all together, pushing the ball past the defender, sprinting past the defender and then getting the cross in while running at pace. If he is going to improve, he needs to have these specific goals to improve each stage to stop him from falling into naive practice. The second characteristic of purposeful practice is that it needs to be focused. This means that a player needs to give their full attention to their practice. There's no value to practicing tackling when your mind is on attacking or on something totally unrelated to soccer at all. Focused practice means that all of your senses, what you are seeing, what you are hearing, what you are feeling and even what you're saying to yourself 
is all centred on the task in hand. You are looking at the ball, telling yourself to focus, feeling your body moving towards the opponent and hearing your foot strike the ball as you take the ball away from the opponent. When you are totally focused, there is no room to process other information apart from what you are learning to do right then. The third characteristic of purposeful practice is that it requires feedback. You need to be able to know if you're getting it right or not. If you're practicing shooting at a goal from outside the penalty area by just hitting one shot after another without paying any real attention to where the ball is going, you're not practicing effectively because you're not getting any feedback to learn from. To be practicing purposefully, you need to gain feedback by seeing and feeling the result of the shot you are playing and then adapting your technique on the next attempt to get it closer to what you intend to achieve. The final characteristic of purposeful practice is that you have to get out of your comfort zone. This may be the most important aspect of purposeful practice because if you don't ever push yourself so that you are outside your comfort zone, you will never improve. It is less about working harder and more about working differently, being prepared to try something new. I've got a friend who has been playing golf three or four times a week for over 20 years. And even though he has put in several thousand hours of practice, he has not improved a bit. This is because he has never allowed himself to play outside his comfort zone. He always does the same practice, plays the same type of shot and takes the same approach to the game he always has. So just doesn't improve. The problem is that purposeful practice isn't easy because you're never settling for what you've got. One of the players I've really admired in recent times is the former Chelsea and England star Frank Lampard who recently finished his career at New York City FC. When I first saw him play for Chelsea when he was about 21 I would never have believed he would go on to have such a great career as he did. He was competent but was certainly one of the less impressive players in the team. The Chelsea fans weren't too impressed with him either and the fans of West Ham who sold him to Chelsea were delighted to be rid of him. But then, over the next few years, he just got better and better until he became one of the greatest midfielders in the world. He was known as being one of the hardest trainers and is a great example of how purposeful practice can lead to greatness if you are prepared to take yourself out of your comfort zone day in day out. So this is what purposeful practice is, having specific goals in mind which take you out of your comfort zone while staying focused and keeping an eye on your progress. It isn't easy to be a great coach. Among the many attributes a leading coach will have, are a great understanding of the game, good communication skills, immense self-belief and vision, tactical awareness, not to mention the ability to motivate, inspire and energise their players. One other essential ingredient probably takes more time and effort than any of those, and that is preparation. Coaches who don't prepare for training sessions usually end up resorting to naive practice methods as they are more likely to make each training session similar to the last one. Taking time to prepare will enable you to make the most out of your training sessions. Always think about what it is that you would like to work on that will give your players the kind of purposeful practice that will take them to the next level. Remember that each one of your players will be at different levels of ability, so consider making the drills you are coaching appropriate for the player who is performing the skill you are practicing. If it is too easy, they will switch off and get bored, and if it is too difficult, they will lose confidence and will struggle to improve. By personalising your coaching as much as you can to the requirements of each player, you will see a greater progression over the long term than by adopting a one-size-fits-all approach. One result of purposeful practice is that 
to begin with, your players are likely to make mistakes. In fact, if they are not making mistakes, it is likely they aren't doing purposeful practice. It is really important that you don't criticise them when they make mistakes, but instead let them know what they could do to improve on the next attempt. If a player just cannot perform the skill at all, break the skill down into smaller pieces and focus on one piece at a time. Only once they have mastered the first piece, then they can move on to the next. 